Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here at Able Cine in Burbank, California, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Hive Wasp 100C. It's a new LED fixture from the company. It is now shipping, and I was fortunate enough to get to use the light in my production workshops at NAB this year. And now that it's actually shipping, it's so popular that the two units that I have right now, one that I'm using for my key light and the one that I'm going to show you here, are both pre-production units. So the firmware on these units is not completely final, the shipping products it is, but it does have all of the functionality of the shipping versions and except for the fact that the shipping versions are very, very quiet and you can hear the fan a little bit on this particular unit. I can show you everything that this light can do right now and also some interesting accessories that I have that I'm very excited to show you. So the first thing is, let's talk about what the light comes with. The light fixture itself is very, very lightweight. The light itself is designed to use pro photo style accessories. So anything that has this pro photo ring will actually fit onto the light itself. This is an accessory that you can buy, but I'm gonna show you the parts that come with the light. And besides the safety ring here, which I actually have gaff taped down so it doesn't make noise, it does come with a 22 degree parabolic reflector. It comes with barn doors, well-made barn doors, real barn doors. And it also comes with this pouch, which has three modifiers or lenses really that go into the light to change the beam angle. Now standardly, this light, and I'm just going to turn it up to, let's say, uh, actually 1%, so that there's a little bit of light output here. There is a 180 degree spread without any modifiers. And I should point out before we get into anything else that in terms of white balance, my camera is set to tungsten. My key light is tungsten. My kicker here is tungsten. Right now, the background light that I'm using is set to daylight, so we get this warm, cool contrast. I'm going to go ahead and strike that light in a minute so that we can see just the quality of this light um, and basically allow you to see that. So what I'll do is I'll build this up with the reflector, the barn doors. I'll put in one of the lenses, and I'll turn off that light, and then we'll talk about how the light functions itself. So we've got the barn doors on here, and I've got a lens on here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start to show you the controls. There are four basic controls on here. We have intensity, which is designated by D for your dimmer. We have color temperature, which is in Kelvin. We have saturation, and we have hue. Now, this particular light, and let's just go ahead and turn it up so we can get some light on the background right now. This is set to 3200 Kelvin. Um, is a little bit different in terms of how they design their LEDs. We see right now with multicolor LED fixtures, and there are quite a lot of them coming to market, different approaches. One is to use red, green, blue, and white LEDs, and then to combine those. One of them is to use tungsten LEDs, to use daylight LEDs, and also RGB LEDs, and then combine those. Hive has taken a different approach, and historically, Hive has been known, wow, that background light is pretty bright, let's turn it down a little bit. Hive has been known for their plasma fixtures, and they are very, very efficient, very, very long-lasting, and produce a very similar quality of light to HMIs. So this is really their first LED fixture, and they decided in their laboratory when they started to design this thing to experiment with combining different colors. And in the end, they wound up with a primary color and then secondary and tertiary colors that they mixed together to create, um, first and foremost, a pure white light. And what you want to do, no matter how much functionality is in a multicolor light, 
you want to make sure that when you're going from our basic tungsten to daylight color temperatures that that light is white, that it's consistent, that it is hopefully high CRI, this light fixture is, that it is hopefully high TLCI, this fixture is, and you can check out all of the metrics on the light if you'd like. But you also want to make sure that you can give people all of that other functionality. And so what did they come up with? They came up with five colors. So you have red as your primary color, and then you have your secondary and tertiary colors, and those are amber, we have cyan, you have lime, my favorite, and also sapphire. And combining those, for Hive at least, this was the combination that they felt was giving them the light that they wanted to create. So that's what's being used inside of here. And again, when you're not using the modifiers, you're getting a 180 degree spread of light. When you're putting reflectors, parabolic reflectors on there and lenses, you're changing your beam angles. So first of all, in the dimmer, as I change the dimmer, it's changing in 10% increments. But if I hold down the adjust knob here, I can change it in 1% increments. So that's really nice in terms of being granular with your output or intensity of the light. Then I'm going to switch over to our color temperature. And between tungsten and daylight, we're getting consistent output from the light in terms of high CRI, TL, CI, and then also the actual output itself. We can drop below tungsten, and as we start to do that, we will see a decrease in output, but we have the ability with these five colors to go all the way down to 1650 in terms of Kelvin temperature. Again, remember, I am white balanced to tungsten right now when you're looking at the overall colors. So I can also go above daylight, 5600 Kelvin, and I can go all the way up to 8000 Kelvin. And of course here, because I'm white balanced to tungsten, that is going to read as very, very blue light. So we get a very warm, cool contrast here when we're doing that. So we're going to bump that back down to 5600 Kelvin, and now we're going to move over to saturation. When you're looking here at 5600 Kelvin here, and our saturation is set to zero, then we are not mixing in any additional color. We are trying to produce a nice color spectrum and also create a white light at that color temperature. So as soon as I go in and I start to increase the saturation, and that is granular as well, by the way. I can hold down adjust and do that in 1% increments. And I forgot to mention, the same is true here for Kelvin temperature. Hold down the just and you can change it in 25 degree Kelvin increments. So um, again, granular for all of these adjustments. But going back to saturation here, if I start to increase the saturation, what it's doing is at zero it's starting with our white light and then it's starting to mix in a hue, an actual color. And this is based on a standard hue color wheel. So zero would be on that wheel red. And let's just go ahead and bring the saturation up to 100%. So now we have red at 100% saturation. And if I switch over to our hue wheel and let's say change it to 240, then on any multicolor LED fixture that has hue, if we were at 240, we would now have blue light. So we can then, of course, go back to our saturation and we can mix as much or as little of that blue, that hue, into our white light. So for me, this just gives you a tremendous amount of control, and that's what's so exciting about these fixtures. Now, we have standard wired DMX control here. There is an app so that you can control this light with an app, which is fantastic, through Bluetooth. And the other thing for me are the modifiers. I love the fact that it has this, in fact, this is gonna be way too bright if I let this hit the lens here. So that's at just 10%. If I take this modifier and the barn doors off that comes with the light, um, again, I can take other modifiers, this being the size of a pro photo modifier, I can just pop a pro photo modifier onto here and soft boxes, for instance, 
Westcott makes something called the Rapid Box. It opens up like an umbrella. You can get it in a pro photo mount. You don't have to deal with the speed ring. You can just pop it right on here to the 100C. But my absolute, absolute favorite modifier is something I'm going to show you right now. So you might be wondering why I have this white piece of foam core behind me, and that's so that I can show you this next modifier. Hive sells this little rinky-dinky thing here for about a hundred dollars, and it is an accessory that will allow you, if you get a mini source 4, to attach a mini source 4 to the 100C. And to me, this is super, super exciting. So I want to be clear, you have to just source your own mini source 4. This happens to be a 19 degree one in terms of the lens. And you just take this little accessory here and you're going to pop that onto the back of your mini source 4. And you're going to attach that and you're going to tie it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And now we have the exact attachment that we need to put this mini source 4 onto this fixture. So let me just go ahead and dim this all the way. I'm going to pan the light over here and just make sure that it's turned in the right direction and tied down correctly. So let me just line that up right here. So that's going on to the 100C. I'm going to rotate that clockwise. And now, <laughs> awesome, I have a source 4. So basically, let's go ahead and increase the intensity on the light. And I'm going to tilt that up just a little bit so you can see the light itself. And right now I have it set to daylight, but you can, of course, set it to anything you want. So you're not locked down to a tungsten or a daylight fixture. You can use all of the saturation and hue functionality here. And then it is an actual source 4, so I can go in here and I can actually start to cut the light and be very precise. I'm just actually referring to a monitor here so I can make sure that you're seeing what I want you to see. And you can see that I can cut that light in pretty much any way that I want. And then also, if you wanted to, because it's a mini source 4, you can go ahead and have gobos made for it and you can pop those in. And you can see here that it is just, to me, really, really exciting that I can do this. And then, of course, I can now go in here and I can not only go in and I can change my color temperature and do all of the stuff that we talked about before, but if I want to, I can go into my saturation. And let's just go ahead and do, again, 100% here. I'll go back to saturation. We'll dial that up to 100%. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to play with the color wheel. And we can start to dial in those different colors. This is the type of light that, for me, really is categorized as something that could be in everybody's kit something that can work with lots of other fixtures, but also, for me, one of the things that I like out of a light is that it has a uniqueness. It does something or does things that other lights can't. And the fact that I can take this and for very little money, I can modify it with a mini source 4, and I can go in here and basically get any color that I want out of the fixture means that I can use this for a lot of different types of productions. So that's an overview of the Hive Wasp 100C. Thanks for watching.